Hi, this is Stacy Kennedy with www.100krealestate.com. And if you're a landlord, you know it's not all fun and games. And we're definitely lured in by the idea of passive cash flow. And where the passive part of it is you're not going to a job to earn your paycheck, there are times where you need to be active in your business. Now, if you have a property manager managing your rental properties, then the amount of activity that you might have in your business might be fairly minimal. But there is activity. So let me tell you about a, a question I recently got from one of my former students that I trained several years ago. He has an investment property, and it's been performing fine and great. And just recently, his tenant stopped paying, and he's gone through the eviction process, through the court eviction process. But now when it's time for the bailiff to come out, he's wondering whether there are any options out there. And I'll tell you, I owned a property management company for several years, and through doing that, through my own investing, through training thousands of real estate investors throughout the country, there are a couple of things that you can do when you have a situation where a tenant has come to the end of their, for their eviction period, and it's time for them to go. Now, one is to call a bailiff. Now, the reason that you might hesitate on that is that can be very, very expensive. So in the market where this investor is investing, if it's a single family house, it could easily be $800 to $1,500 for the bailiff to come in and remove the tenant and their belongings. And it all depends on the amount of belongings that the bailiff and his crew have to remove from the property. So in this particular market, it has a requirement that you actually have a dumpster outside prepared for the stuff that's going to go in it because that particular city doesn't want to have junk all over the place. So not only does the investor have to put up money for a dumpster, which is usually a few hundred dollars, they also have to pay for the bailiff, which can be you know, up to a thousand or more dollars. So it's very expensive. So when this investor asked me, you know, is there anything else I can do? Here's what I, this, this is what I would want to tell him. So the first thing that you do, and I hate doing it, I hate it, it's wrong, it's just not right. But the reality is sometimes we have to completely put our emotions aside and make a business decision that makes the sense for our bank account, for our business, for our shareholders, even though the shareholders might be us. Okay, so removing the emotion out of it, what's the fastest and easiest thing that we can do to get that tenant out of the house without forking over all that money? It's called cash for keys. And I hate it. Every time I have to do that, I just, ugh, I don't want to. It's not right. It's not fair. Why am I giving this tenant money when they owe me thousands? But the reality is, if I can pay the tenant $150 to be out in three days and leave the property broom clean, which means that they have to have a little inspection before they get the cash from my property manager, that's going to save me so much money compared to dealing with the bailiff and any damage they might do, not leaving the place clean, it costs me more money. So the reality is cash for keys is a great way to get a tenant out as, before having to get the bailiff. Now it doesn't work every time. Sometimes they're going to dig their heels in and you're going to have to remove them forcibly. But I will say that in my experience, cash for keys works way more than it doesn't because if someone can have cash in their hands, and be moved out and not have their stuff thrown in a dumpster, that's going to be more uh, appealing to them. Now, the other little thing, and I've done this once before, and it worked, and it just came on a brainstorm. I was consulting with a client of mine who had properties in the same city where that requires the dumpster, and the, uh, the attorney with the eviction paperwork had lost the paperwork. So, I mean, as far as the tenant knew, chances are their eviction time was pretty much up. But the fact of the matter is, our attorney had lost the paperwork, couldn't find it anywhere, and we were going to have to start over. And so me and the client sat down and went, what could we do? We were working on fortifying management systems for him because he was having in-house management and creating you know, things that systems and flows. And this totally put a cog right in the wheel of our system. We had a good eviction system going. Everything was working. And now oh, we're going to have to start over. Here's what we did, and it was brilliant. It was just brilliant. Well, I should say it worked out brilliantly. Okay, so in this particular city, a tenant would know that there's an eviction coming when the dumpster arrives, because the landlord is not going to spend $300 to have a dumpster brought out to the property if the bailiffs aren't coming out like in the next couple days. So here's what we did. We had it all planned out. We essentially had the property of the on-site manager go and write a letter to the tenant saying, it was on a Friday, saying that if by Monday morning they have not moved out, a dumpster would be de delivered and that the eviction would proceed. 
Now, the dumpster being delivered, we could control. The eviction being proceeding, I mean, what does that mean? It was vague enough. The eviction proceeding for us really meant starting the stupid thing over again. But as far as they knew, paperwork wasn't lost. They didn't know. And so essentially we wrote a letter to them saying, look, you have, we'll give you the, through the rest of the weekend to, to move out. But if you're not out on Monday morning, the dumpster will be delivered and the eviction will proceed. Okay, so our essentially we called the dumpster company on Monday and said, deliver a dumpster tomorrow, Tuesday. So uh, wouldn't you know it, magically, Tuesday night, the house was empty for all intents and purposes. And I mean, it was a bluff. It was a total bluff. But here's the thing. It cost us $300 for the dumpster instead of a thousand plus dollars to have the bailiff come out and then whatever damage that the tenant would have would have done. So anyway, it was a bit of a bluff, but you know, when you're a landlord, sometimes you got to get creative. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I mean, you know, just like I know, what I really like to do is get someone to hire them and physically drag them out of the property and throw them out. If they're not paying rent, that's not fair. Why do they get to live on my property? It costs me money and, um, it's not right, but we can't do that legally. We have to follow the law. So there are times where you can be creative um, without breaking the law and, uh, and get the same effect. So cash for keys is going to be your number one most effective. But if you happen to live in a market where you, know, you have something like that where a dumpster is required, that might be another way. And I'll tell you one other thing. On an apartment, this was a single family house. On an apartment building that the same investor I was consulting with has, Within two weeks, we were, had several tenants. It was a brand. It was a brand new takeover. There were several tenants who hadn't paid, and so we did. We brought a dumpster over. It wasn't for the purpose of evicting tenants because we had just taken over the property. It was to start renovating units. But we sent out letters to those tenants who hadn't paid, saying the formal eviction process has begun. So you either pay or you move out or you'll be evicted. Well, at the time, we weren't intending for the dumpster to mean eviction for them. We were rehabbing. But they took, they put two and two together, and we had several tenants just move out on their own without it requiring us six to eight weeks in the courts to get them out and then attorney's fees. So anyway, you know, the thing with investing is there's all sorts of random weird things that can happen. And, you know, to the extent I can think of them and remember all these crazy things that have happened, I'll share them with you guys so that you can be creative with your own stuff. And just know, don't take it too seriously. When things happen, don't get too upset. It's very easy to get emotionally wrapped up in a problem. Just put on a very logical thinking cap and go, you know, what can I do to solve this problem? You know, and always reach out to your community of other investors because chances are you're not the first to go through it. You definitely won't be the last. But, hey, if, if we're in this to invest long term, there's going to be things you have to deal with, and that's just the price of it. So, anyway, uh, investing is a game. It's a serious game, and uh, it can be a lot of fun. It can be a pain in the butt, but ultimately there's great money to be made in it. So, uh, once again, this is Stacy Kennedy with 100krealestate.com. And uh, if there's anything that I can do to help and serve you, please come visit my website, and I'll see you then.